another thing that I really feel that I have to speak on uh, are news reports regarding um, an area that I was at personally. Uh, this mix, same makeshift bus station was the area of a lot of coverage where they talked about people acting like animals and um, shooting and fighting. And as someone who was there, I could tell you, I was there for six hours at least. And um, everyone was relatively calm. In fact, there was a sense of community. There's a natural kind of bonding that takes place, I think, in situations where everyone experiences a tragedy together. We kind of saw it in 9-11 where for at least a few weeks or a few months, everybody kind of was together against a common enemy or I've been through other hurricanes and I've seen people experience uh, fires in a home where everybody just kind of comes together and um, you're all bonded by this tragedy. And there was definitely that kind of sense of community. Um, everybody was trying to help each other out as best they could and what little people might have been able to carry in their arms they were sharing and um, doing their best to help out. But when people are treated like animals for long enough, then they might be inclined to act like animals. The military officials told us to get in certain configurations, certain lines, um, to try to maintain some order and that we would board the buses in a certain order. But what began happening as people became desperate is that um, some people began bum rushing the buses as they approached and getting their families on. And instead of the military officials stopping these people and trying to maintain order, they made it a free for all. And they turned their heads when people pushed or fought to get on buses. And they made it so that in order to get on a bus, you had to fight. And as people fought to get on these buses, they looked and they laughed and they encouraged each other. We were entertainment. And the family that I come from, the parents that I have, uh, they were too, far too dignified to fight to get on the bus. So we were going to wait. We weren't going to punch and claw our way through. But eventually, as the sun began to set, we realized that we had little choice. People began to get more desperate and scared as the night went on. And we were afraid of what people would begin doing. People were frustrated because people that had been waiting for hours were being skipped ahead by more aggressive people who had just gotten there. And eventually, we decided to ally ourselves with another family that was from the same neighborhood as us. And we had to fight to get on a bus. I had to punch and elbow my way through crowds. My mother was grabbed by an angry mob and I had to elbow someone in the face. I hate the fact that I was forced into that situation. I hate that these white military officials watched as it happened and didn't offer any help that I was entertainment for them and that they forced me to go into some kind of animalistic state and turn on people that were once part of my community. And as a crowd grabbed my younger brother and took him into the crowd, the military officials urged the bus to leave and said that we would all be reunited at another point. But luckily, the people on the bus, we banded together and had a mini riot and demanded that the bus remain and that the military officials go and sail, help my brother. He was pulled into the crowd over the barricade. People were very angry at this point. They were throwing things. They were attacking those who were trying to get onto the buses because they were desperate. And it's hard to understand if you've never been through something like this, but like I said, things that would normally seem crazy start to seem a lot more practical when you're pushed to certain limits. What I want to make sure that you guys realize is that this is not something that happened in the 60s. I'm not referring to the antebellum South. This is something that happened within the last five years. It hasn't even been five years. This is real. These are real people doing these horrible things to each other. I'd like to think that perhaps I've just given voice 
to some of the feelings and concerns of those who may not have had the words to express it. I've spoken nothing but the truth. If any of you feel that I'm trying to inflame hatred towards whites, that is not true. All I'm saying is the truth. This is what happened. I was there to bear witness to this. Nothing has been fabricated. I have exaggerated nothing. This is just the truth.